What is going on, guys? It's Power Bang. We're back with another Brawl Stars update because you know what? It's been 15 minutes since the last Brawl Stars update. That's right, guys. Another Brawl Stars balance change update has gone live. And two things on that, guys. Really, really, I'm a big fan of the responsiveness and the speed at which the Supercell Brawl Stars team is, is responding to the game, responding to feedback, and also trying to test and balance out their game. So that means it's it's going to get us to global that much faster if they're actively testing things out and trying to tweak and balance things so that it's a better overall experience. The second point, though, is dang if it isn't tough to get used to these brawlers. It's like we have a certain group of settings for a week. We get used to somebody and we're like, man, that, that brawler's good. Tara, for example, we'll cover her in a minute. And then they change it all up and it's like, oh, never mind, that brawler's bad now. So I, I don't know what the heck's going on. We're going to go through every single brawler change and balance update in this video. Let's get into it. First and foremost, we've got the event rotation. This is a pretty self-explanatory change. They're simply going to be increasing the amount of brawl ball that enters the lineup. I think what you're seeing is brawl ball was very, very widely acclaimed by the community, very well received game mode, and people want to see more of it. People are genuinely sad when Brawl Ball isn't in the lineup, so from now on, you're going to see Brawl Ball appearing more often in the event lineup. The next set of changes are for the heist game mode. Two different changes have gone live, and one of them has buffed the offense. 300 hit points fewer on all safes across every heist map. That is going to give offense a little bit more of an advantage as the safes are easier to destroy. The other change to heist has to do with the GG Corral map. The box around the safe has been removed, so kind of another buff to the offense. The next general change has to do with Brawl Ball. On the pinhole punt map, the narrow one tile opening for the goal has been expanded and widened a little bit so it will be easier to score on pinhole punt. Let's get into the brawler changes now, guys. A whole ton of brawlers, probably half of them, have been tweaked or balance corrected for the current patch. First up, we're going to talk about Terra. Terra was one of my favorite new additions to the game. She is super strong, or rather, was super strong. They have decreased her health from 800 to 700, so that's a pretty significant, you know, 12.5% nerf to her total HP pool. They've also increased her reload time from 1.8 seconds to 2.0 seconds. That's two tenths of a second more between each shot for Terra. They've also decreased her range by two thirds of a tile, 0.67 tiles less now for Terra. They felt that her penetrating damage was simply too strong, and she was, uh, you know, a little bit too strong overall as a brawler. The next brawler was Pam. The team seems to have heard some of our concerns that Pam felt just a little bit too weak, and they've taken some steps to correct that. Pam has been buffed in the latest patch. Her super heal radius has been increased and now heals at a base level 80 hit points per second. They've decreased the main attack reload time from 1.8 seconds to 1.6 seconds, so she's going to be able to fire that junk much faster. Now, probably one of the key elements that they've actually buffed on Pam is that her main attack no longer has such a huge spread. It's a little bit more narrow, and that means she can probably land one extra shot on her target every attack. Pam's super is also easier to charge. Not only is it more effective, but it only takes 20 hits now to generate a super, down from 21. Next up, let's talk about Bo. Bo was running rampant this last patch, and they seem to have toned him down, not just a little, but a lot. Bo was too strong with four mines, and the pushback often made them unavoidable. They've decreased his mines from four back to three. Surprise, surprise. They've also increased his main attack damage from 80 to 100, so Bo's arrows actually do more damage than they did before. They've decreased his overall health from 900 base down to 800, so they've nerfed his hit points, and the pushback from his mines has been removed. Next up, there's Cole. They felt Cole had a low usage rate amongst high tier trophy games, so they wanted to do some things to kind of buff him and get him used more widely. They've increased his hit points from 600 base all the way up to 700. That's a 16% buff to his overall HP. That's huge. But probably even huger than that is they've decreased his reload time from 1.5 seconds down to 1.25 seconds. So it's actually a 16% decrease in the reload time as well. So more Colt bullets will be on the field. Very similarly to Colt, Ricochet also had a similarly low usage rate amongst high tier games. They have also done the exact same thing as far as the tweaks to Colt. They've applied 
add those same tweaks to Ricochet. They've increased his base hit points from 600 all the way to 700. They've decreased his reload time from 1.25 seconds to one second. Now the quarter second reduction is the same as Colt, but it's actually a more drastic percentage of the overall reload time. So Ricochet is getting an even bigger buff than Colt. Now I call them the cousins, but Dynamite and Barley, very similar mechanics. The team noticed that Barley was being very well utilized at high trophy games, but Dynamite was not. So they've taken steps to make sure Dynamite gets into the rotation a little bit more. Dynamite's hit points have been increased from 600 all the way to 700. You might be seeing a trend here. We're not seeing as many wimpy low health brawlers because they're just too fragile. But now they're kind of all creeping up the hit point rankings. It's going to be interesting out on that brawl field. <laughs> brawl field. Next up, let's talk about Brock. Brock had a low usage rate at high trophy games, so they've increased his health from 600 to 700 as well. Again, you're seeing these low health brawlers kind of fall off and join the rest of the crew with medium level hit points. And just like last patch where they increased the speed that Brock's rockets fly, they've done it again. Brock's rockets, Brock's rockets, actually fly 17% faster now. One brawler that was significantly underutilized after some recent nerfs was Poco. They've actually seen low usage rates across the board since that up Update, and they have tried to get Poco back into the game by buffing him significantly. Poco's main attack damage was increased from 140 to 160, so he's going to hit a lot harder. Poco's super healing has also gotten a significant buff, making him more useful to bring in those team compositions. His super has gone from 400 hit points to 460 hit points at the base level. Let's talk changes to Crow. They felt Crow was just a little bit too fast at generating his super. That gave him far more escapability than intended, and he was able to get out of sticky situations very, very quickly. They're going to change that a little bit by increasing the amount of hits it takes for Crow to generate his super. They also felt Crow's range was just a little bit too long. They've decreased it by two thirds of a tile. Now, clearly the most utilized brawler in high trophy games was Mortis. Mortis is going to get the nerf bat. Mortis has had his movement speed decrease from 750 down to 650. 750, to give you an example, is how fast Crow moves. 650 is how fast all of the other brawlers move. So there were only two brawlers in the game before that moved at a faster rate of speed than the majority of the brawlers. That was Crow and that was Mortis, but no more. Mortis now moves at the same speed that everyone else does, and Crow is the only one that walks around a little bit faster. Mortis also had his super range decreased. The bats that he throws out that also do significant damage and heal Mortis have been decreased from 13.34 tiles all the way down to 10 tiles. That is a pretty significant reduction. All right, guys, that sums up the brawler changes, but what do I think of them? Is this going to kind of make the game better? Are certain brawlers going to be impacted? Next negatively, obviously, with the nerfs, but is it good for the game? Let's go through all of the brawlers now, and I'll give you guys my honest feedback as to if the team is making the right decisions with these brawlers, or if I feel like they've kind of taken a misstep. First and foremost, let's talk about Terra. They've actually decreased her health, they've decreased her range a little bit, and they've also increased her reload time. Terra was my very favorite brawler after her release, but let's go ahead and put that bias aside. Three different nerfs to different mechanics, her health, her reload time, and her range feels a bit it's severe. Terra was an extremely good brawler before, but I don't think I would have put her in the overpowered category. I feel like the team may have gone a little bit too far on this one with Terra, especially given how new she is to the game. Obviously, they have the data. I do not. Just kind of telling you guys how I feel. Perhaps three different mechanic nerfs was severe. Maybe one or two would have been more appropriate for this first round. Pam is in the same boat. Pam, I thought, was very underwhelming before, and she definitely needed some attention. But they buffed four different mechanics for Pam. They buffed her super healing radius, as well as the amount it heals. I guess that's five. They decreased her main attack reload time. They did less spread in the main attack. And they decreased the amount of hits it takes to generate a super. That's five different mechanic buffs. How are you that far off from the initial launch of the character? It just doesn't, it doesn't make any sense to me. I think, again, fewer buffs uh, a little bit at a time instead of these drastic sweeping changes because the last thing I want to see this game do is have knee-jerk reactions to what is public outcry or game data. I don't want to see, like, knee-jerk, like, oh, crap, this person's underpowered. Let's make them overpowered, you know, and have these drastic swings. It should be kind of more gradual in nature. I feel like they made the right decision in buffing Pam, although I wonder if they went a little bit too far. Let's talk Bo. 
Bo, I felt was way overpowered before. He went from a average brawler to, I thought, hands down, the best brawler in the, the blink of an eye. The four mines right away, they, they did not need to buff his super in the first place, so removing that was good. But removing the knockback from his super, that's a little bit frustrating because even when Bo's trying to get away and escape from, say, an El Primo or a bull that's right on top of him, the knockback on his super was how he accomplished that. Now that he doesn't have that mechanic, Bo is going to be a lot more vulnerable, you know, more of a sitting duck, I guess, on defense. The fact that they increased the damage his main attack does, I felt was very, very uh, appropriate. I've been asking for a primary attack buff on his uh, damage for quite some time, even before the mines were buffed. When they came out with the additional mine, four instead of three, I was like, why did you buff the super? It was already one of the best in the game. The changes to Bo were a little bit confusing, especially the decreased health. It looks like they're trying to go away from the thought that this is a ranged tank. Well, ranged tanks don't, that's not really a thing because you don't, you don't tank from range. You get up close and dirty and fight, right? So it looks like they're taking away some of his hit points in an attempt to give him more damage. Colt is one of the more underrated brawlers I felt before. I felt like Colt was very, very strong, especially in the right hands before this patch. Now that they buffed his hit points and more importantly, buffed the speed of his reload. Now he can attack more, attack faster. Colt, I feel, is going to be an absolute monster. I feel like the game data probably didn't show this before how effective he actually was, but Colt is going to be really, really good. I don't think that I disagree with this change uh, just based off of usage. It's kind of, this is one of those things where it's kind of nice to see new people come into the meta. That's definitely going to happen here, I think, with Colt. Uh, he is going to be extremely strong on the brawl field. Same with Ricochet. Ricochet having his hit points increase makes him less fragile, and that increased attack speed, oh my god, Ricochet could already put out just a load, a, a hail of bullets before, and now with a one quarter second reduction in reload speed, there's going to be Ricochet bullets on the field, like, permanently. It's going to be an endless stream. Watch out for Ricochet and Colt in the coming patch. Dynamite's low usage rate got him another buff. They've increased his health from 600 to 700, and I find myself being incredibly effective already with Dynamite. Dynamite, this buff is just going to make that even easier to survive and perhaps even get off a few more shots. I told you guys last time that Brock was going to make a comeback into the meta. It seems like that is more inevitable than ever with a 17% increase in the uh, flying speed of those rockets. Brock is going to be pretty soon firing his rockets as fast as freaking Piper, man. So he is going to be a force to be reckoned with here in the near future. Now, the changes to Crow I felt were debatable. Crow was one of those characters that in the right hands was somebody that can move very efficiently, stay just outside of attack range and capitalize when other brawlers are in between shots, Crow could be very, very strong and put out an enormous amount of pressure. But in the wrong hands, I felt like Crow wasn't really uh, strong at all. I felt like he was fairly weak, and if you made the wrong play, you die super easily. At high levels, I feel like Crow could have been a little bit tuned wrong, I guess, but you know, for the most part, for most people that are playing Brawl Stars right now, I didn't feel that Crow was super out of whack before. This is going to be an interesting change. I'll be intrigued to see if Crow falls out of the meta completely based off of these nerfs. The changes to Poco were absolutely warranted in my opinion. Poco had fallen out of the meta. Poco was pretty much invisible and you just never see him anymore. You gotta have the one of the few support characters in the game actually useful enough to support and to be present in most team compositions. That simply wasn't happening before so they made some changes by increasing the amount of heals that he does and also slightly buffing his attack damage. I think those were both proper changes and I'm happy to see them. Lastly, let's talk about Mortis. I think you're gonna see a uh, an outcry in the public about Mortis and and, oh my god, you've nerfed him to the ground, you've given him the nerf bat, what are you doing, Supercell? I, I think you guys should slow your roll. I don't think that the changes to Mortis are going to be that drastic. I think that the super range of 13.34 tiles before being brought back to 10, I feel like 10 is still an extremely long shot that's still like com comparable to a Brock or a Piper. That is plenty as far as the range on his super. He's typically trying to aim at somebody four to five tiles away to kind of finish them off or to get a jump on the fight. That being said, the movement speed decrease is probably what people are most concerned about with Mortis. The fact that he moves at the same speed at all of the other brawlers now, people are crying not fair play, that's foul, Mortis needs to be faster. I don't necessarily think that I agree with this, I feel like we should wait and see. Remember that Mortis's primary movement advantage was in his dash, that actually is his attack, and that takes his uh, attack charges away when he uses that. The fact that he can dash around, put some distance between him and his pursuance, or close the ground on those 
knows that he is trying to catch up to. I think that was the primary asset for Mortis was his ability to dash and use that to cover ground more quickly. I don't think the fact that he's a little bit slower is going to really impact the game that much. I could be wrong, but I feel like this is a wait and see. Guys, thank you so much for watching this video. I really appreciate you tuning in to all the Brawl Stars content. If you found the analysis helpful, please let me know by liking the video and sub to the channel for more Brawl Stars action. That's all I got for this episode, guys. This is Power Bang. I will catch you guys in the next one. Next up, let's talk about Brock. Brock had a high... Next... Next up, let's talk about Brock. Brock had a... Dang it, Super Soldier freaking notifications!